at something new this week, looking at the Pillars of Pioneer. If you're looking to break into Pioneer, this is a great series to start with. I'll look at some of the key components of each deck and give you an overview of how you want the games to play out. Be sure to like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Now, let me know what you think of this idea in the comments down below, and if you're looking for gameplay videos, all the decks featured in this series should be found here on my YouTube channel or on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash DarthJason. This week, we're starting out with one of the longest standing archetypes in Pioneer, we read Arclight Phoenix. Arclight Phoenix has seen play in Standard, Historic, Modern, and even Legacy. With the banning of Faithless Looting in Modern though, its primary home has been in Pioneer. Alright. Let's start with the threats. Arclight Phoenix is the namesake of the deck, recursive, difficult to answer, and can mitigate the downside of the discard part of the deck. A haste 3-2 flyer is historically a great spot to threaten opponents, opposing planeswalkers, or to trade with aggressive creatures. Next up is Thing in the Ice. Thing allows you to slow down aggressive decks and can help you quickly turn the corner after it flips. The last big threat is Crackling Drake. This used to be the second most prevalent threat in the deck, but now it is mostly used as a large single shot kill in the mid to late game. Most Phoenix decks run a single maximized velocity to combo kill decks that tap out by playing Crackling Drake and getting in for 20 plus damage. Next up, let's take a look at the spells that make this one of the most consistent decks in all of Pioneer. Starting with the cards that give some form of card advantage, we have Opt, Card of Course, Expressive Iteration, Is It Charm, Strategic Planning, and Treasure Cruise. These cards act to smooth out the decks early and mid game and give a level of selection and repeated card draw that most decks in the format don't have access to. Now we move on to the removal. Lightning Axe, Wild Slash, and Spike Field Hazard are primarily there to slow down the most aggressive decks in the format while increasing the cheap spells in the deck. Without a critical mass of 1 mana spells, it is very difficult to bring back Phoenix, especially on turns 3, 4, or 5. Now let's look at the mana base. Of all the two color decks in Pioneer, Blue Red has some of the most consistent mana. Between Steam Vents, Sulphur Falls, Spire Bluff Canal, and Riverglade Pathway, all of your lands act as whichever color you need, making it very difficult to get trapped by a single color, such as with decks like Green White or Red Green that are each missing a fast land. Now let's take a look at the sideboard. Blue decks and Pioneer have some of the most efficient hate cards in the form of Counter Magic. Blue Red gets to play with Aether Gust, Mystical Dispute, Negate, and Disdainful Stroke. When looking to Shora Pesky Agra matchups, you also get a Braid, as well as Anger of the Gods. Next, we have threats that come out of the sideboard, including Ral, Is It Viceroy, and Young Pyromancer. These threats allow you to pivot from using the graveyard as both Treasure Cruise and Phoenix rely on the graveyard. Finally, we have Narset, Parter of Veils. Now, what beats a deck that draws a ton of cards? Narset is able to turn off a lot of the ability of this deck to churn through and find answers. Small tip, in the mirror, make sure not to minus your Narsets, because leaving her at 5 means that a Arclight Phoenix from hand or the graveyard won't be able to kill it, turning their card draw back on. These are some of the staples of the sideboard for this archetype, but there are endless flex spots and small tweaks that skilled pilots can find to make certain matchups better or worse, so be sure to explore all of the cards in Pioneer. Now let's look at some basic gameplay concepts with Blue Red Arclight Phoenix. This deck will spend the first few turns drawing cards, removing threats, and discarding phoenixes to set up a turn where you can cast three spells. If you can keep the game going long enough, you become much more likely to find relevant spells as your opponent is less likely to filter or draw cards as aggressively as this deck can. Postboard, Arclight can easily transform into a controlling deck versus pure aggro or into a tempo deck versus midrange and hard control. On to some final tips and tricks. Be aware of Rest in Peace, Leyline of the Void, Graf Digger's Cage, and other pieces of Graveyard Hate. You can answer most of these for a single turn with Brazen Borrower, but if you expect they'll sit and play, consider cards like Young Pyromancer or Ral. Be sure to check the creature types of cards in play if you plan to flip a thing in the ice for the win. Woe Strider, for instance, is a horror. Your Phoenix doesn't need to see all three spells to come back. You discard a Phoenix via your third instant or sorcery pre-combat, it'll still trigger to come back. Don't be afraid to dispute or gust your own spells if you need a third spell to recur phoenixes for lethal. Hope you've enjoyed the first video in this Pillars of Pioneer series. Thank you for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more Pioneer content just like this. Some deck lists for this archetype along with links to my Twitch channel and Patreon are in the description below. Let me know what you think of this style of video in the comments and tell me what pillar you'd like to see next. Until next time!